How's it going everyone? It's Sam. BlackRock just did something big. And anyone can go see it, but many people won't know the impact of this for a while. But we also have a new massive buyer in a way that is maybe more significant than BlackRock. I want to walk through it. It's a different way of thinking about what's happening here in the very near term for Bitcoin. I also want to cover some of the top cryptocurrencies I see in the market right now, including some that I just invested into. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos just like this as soon as I make them. There are also going to be a couple links to Margex and to CoinW underneath the video where you can trade cryptocurrencies using leverage. Also, on Margex, you can use all different forms of collateral. So if you want to trade Bitcoin, you can use USDC as collateral or USDT or Bitcoin or Ethereum. So you can trade the Bitcoin chart, which is the easiest to read and understand, while also getting paid out in other cryptocurrencies, which can be really nice. I think this is one thing that really sets Margex apart from a lot of other cryptocurrency exchanges. Now, let's cover what just happened. If you go over to Bloomberg, right at the top, a giant banner for IBIT. And I've, reload, I've reloaded the page a couple times. It's still IBIT every single time. This is like a, a what, 40% of the home screen. Now, why is this so significant? Well, there are a lot of people that still don't know about Bitcoin. They still didn't know that there are ETFs. They still don't really know much about Bitcoin. And this goes through some of that. It's a big advertisement from BlackRock on one of the premier uh, financial websites out there. And as I've said recently in my video this morning, we have the Bitcoin halving in less than a week. So a lot of companies are probably starting to advertise. Now, I didn't know this until recently. BlackRock's very young. Like Larry Fink, the CEO, is one of the founders. They... They have pushed change and they are pushing people to buy Bitcoin. And why is that? And how much are they pushing? Well, let's look at the advertising budget. Apparently, it's estimated that fund companies spent about $273.2 million on advertising last year, up 47% from the year before. I think this is actually low as well because I actually saw a paper, I think it was about 20, 25 years old, that Fidelity was spending 100, year, 100 million a year on advertising. So I think there's a lot more being spent, especially if you include all the different large companies. And this forces people to want to buy more Bitcoin. Now, again, why would the ETF companies be so gung-ho about buying Bitcoin? Well, let's take a look at two different ETFs. And I've covered this in a full video before, so we'll keep it brief here. But this ETF, number one, is $1 billion and it does not hold Bitcoin. Second ETF is $1 billion and it does hold Bitcoin. And in the first ETF, they have bonds and treasuries, etc. just you know, normal stuff. This is actually very similar to one of BlackRock's ETFs that they said they're going to add Bitcoin to. They, have, they hold bonds and treasuries. Their fee is about 0.8%. Okay, so on a billion dollars, well, they make about $8 million a year. So nothing to scoff at, definitely nothing to scoff at, a decent amount of fees. But if they hold Bitcoin, there are a couple things that this does. First of all, they still invest into bonds, treasuries, that kind of stuff. They still get the same initial fee, that $8 million. But remember, some of their money, let's say 10% is in Bitcoin, well, they're putting this money into their own fund that also gets 0.2%. So they get another $200,000. And you might be saying, well, that's nothing, right? That's like 2% of their overall fees. It's true. But if Bitcoin moves higher, right? If it gives a higher return for the fund, if it was 10%, let's say, and it triples, well, that means the whole AUM of the fund is now $1.2 billion, which means... They can charge that that 0.8 percent on all that new AUM. Okay, so instead of eight hundred thousand dollars for the bigger fund, now it's this amount, nine point six million, and now instead of two hundred thousand dollars fees on the Bitcoin ETF, it pays six hundred thousand. So you can you can increase 
the size of the fund drastically that you actually have the higher fee on. And people will buy the Bitcoin ETF without even noticing it. If you put it in another fund, some people will notice it, but some people just allocate towards a fund like an income growth strategic fund through BlackRock and they don't really know what's happening. They're not looking at every single piece of paper that's sent out. And if they're not dialed into crypto Twitter, they're probably not even knowing that they're buying some Bitcoin. But this can drastically increase the fees that someone like BlackRock could charge and make. So yeah, I think they're going to want to push this. Now, again, there is going to be a big change up, a big buyer. And I think a lot of people don't understand how big this will be. Maybe bigger than BlackRock when it comes down to it. I want to cover that. But first, I want to go through three different cryptocurrencies that I'm looking at in the market and some that I've been buying. Right now, one crypto that I'm watching is Bixos. So Bixos is a cryptocurrency that is in the real world asset space, RWA. They are making a groundbreaking step in the tokenization of real estate assets. And this offers people the opportunity to use their token or USDT to buy part of different real estate projects. And the great thing about this in real estate is that you can tokenize something that is typically very clunky, takes a lot of time, there are a lot of fees, and it can be much faster and more efficient. They're also working in tokens, NFTs, GameFi, staking, and payment solutions. It's not just property. Now, this is a partner of the channel with links underneath the video. Right now, they're on seven different chains. They're on three global exchanges. It's available on Gate.io, Mexi, BitGet, ProBit Global, and they have been blowing up in price recently. You can see here just about a month ago, they were on 0 0.05. 0 0.07 now they're at 0.38 so exploding recently and part of that is they have been burning a lot of tokens 1.5 million ubxs tokens burned recently and they are looking to make some global partnerships very soon go to different events and then in q4 they are planning on their super app beta launch I will leave a link to this underneath the video. You can do more research. You can take a look at the team. You can take a look at the white paper. You can go follow them on Twitter. Now, one cryptocurrency I just added to my portfolio is CoreDAO. Now, this has moved up a lot in the last month. Let me be clear on that. But keep in mind, during the bull market, there are gonna be a lot of cryptocurrencies. If you wanna buy, then you have to buy when it's moved up a lot. Like, this moved up a lot, but yeah, uh, you're just gonna get stuck buying some cryptocurrencies that are up significantly because most of the market's probably gonna move up for the next year, year and a half. Now, it has come down about 50% from where it was just uh, about a week ago. If you're wondering what this is, I'll leave a link to their Twitter underneath the video, but they, they have a lot of followers, 2.3 million, including a bunch of people I know. This is a really good article talking about it. Core Chain, or Core DAO, the, the chain that Core DAO uses, is a scaling and programmability solution for Bitcoin. Satoshi Plus is a hybrid model of delegated proof of work and delegated proof of stake. It's CoreChain's biggest differentiator from other Bitcoin layers. CoreChain uses the EVM for its execution environment. The, develop, the developer community around the EVM has helped to grow a diverse ecosystem with 10 plus native ecosystem projects and other brought over from other EVM ecosystems. Governance of CoreDAO managed through the Core Token is mostly off-chain now, but is moving towards becoming fully on-chain. There's more information about this too. This is a big article. It's on Masari. I'll leave this linked underneath the video as well, but I am adding some to this position now that we've seen a bit of a pullback. And this is a much shorter version. CoreChain is a scaling and programmability solution for Bitcoin with Satoshi Plus Consensus, EVM, Execution Environment, Core DAO Governance, and Core BTC. So definitely one to put on your radar. There's also this cryptocurrency, EC. Now, I've talked about this a handful of times on the channel, and I said, I think this launch is going to be one of the biggest of the year. And it did really well. So they launched on KuCoin, Bybit, Git.io, Uniswap, Thruster, Right now, the cryptocurrency is up about 8x, and it has seen a bit of a pullback, about a 40% pullback from the top on launch this morning. But honestly, this is one of the biggest launches, like with the most people that I know of the year, maybe bigger than Satoshi VM, because I've seen 30 different influencers, all the way up to 
uh, over a million, a million uh, followers and uh, subscribers talking about it. Now, this was a big launch. Of course, there are a lot of people that got tokens initially, but it's actually staying pretty steady, like compared to other cryptos I've seen that fell maybe 60 or 80% after the launch. It's slowly consolidating. Now, this is purely anecdotal, but I really do believe that people that do good things typically do well, and people that do bad things typically do poorly in the end. And this is, again, this is anecdotal, but I had an issue with something, and I was able to reach out to the CEO of EC. He didn't have to help me. He didn't have to fix uh, my problem, but he did very quickly, and he went above and beyond. Like, this is something that very few other companies would do, and definitely not in this time. They were able to fix an issue that I had that was on me, honestly. It was on me. And they were able to do it in a very short period of time. Uh, I am an investor in EC. This is a project that I'm looking forward to holding. I've not sold any yet on their launch here today. Keep in mind, I never know what I'm going to do tomorrow. If it goes up a lot, um, I might take some profits. But like, they have gone above and beyond for the people that are invested in this project. Of course, you never know what's going to happen in the short term, but we'll have to continue to watch it and continue to cover it. And... I've talked about this several times on the channel, so I would definitely go follow them on Twitter as well. I'll leave a link to them underneath the video as well. Now, I think there's something massive that's happening, and a lot of people understand that the Bitcoin halving's coming, but they don't really understand the implications. Of course, we have had a lot of big entities been, uh, that have been buying Bitcoin. Like for example, Mr. 100. Let me see if I can pull this up quickly, but Mr. 100, has been buying a lot of Bitcoin, starting their wallet about a year and a half ago, now becoming one of the top wallets uh, in terms of Bitcoin holdings. Now, let me show it here for you. They've just been buying super consistently. Now, they bought 100 Bitcoin yesterday. Before that, it was about six days, they bought 300 Bitcoin. Before that, they bought another 600 Bitcoin or something, another 1400. Like they've just been accumulating. Look at this, every single line's 100 Bitcoin, 100 Bitcoin, 100 Bitcoin. They rarely sell. Now, this person has taken about 60,000 Bitcoin off of the markets over the last year and a half, basically. In a few days, we have the Bitcoin having, and this is essentially taking selling pressure away. It's even better than a big buyer because there's less uncertainty in my mind. Like over the last 500 days or so, we've seen them this entity buy 59,000 Bitcoin. The Bitcoin having is gonna reduce the supply over the next 500 days by 225,000 Bitcoin. And why do I say 500 days? Well, because it's been about 500 days or so. I just ballparked it since this entity started buying, right? So. This Bitcoin having is equivalent to about four Mr. 100s. They can never sell. They continuously buy every single day, every single block they buy. And in four years, they tell you basically, hey, I'm going to buy more. So instead of 450 Bitcoin a day that I'm going to buy systematically starting in a week, instead of 450, we're going to be buying 675. And then we're gonna be buying even more, about a cheeky 112.5 more every single day, starting four years after that. Like the the programmability of Bitcoin is insane. The the scarcity is insane. Because this is, I know, I know some people say, well, the ETFs are bigger. And honestly, this was a massive event. The ETFs were massive because a lot of them have been buying more Bitcoin than even what's thrown on uh, or thrown out from the Bitcoin miners. Like the net buying by all the ETFs has been massive. We're talking hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin in a very short period of time. Even Grayscale is starting to slow down their selling as well. But the difference is the Bitcoin having, there's no question about it, right? Like we go back and forth and we look at how many Bitcoin are being bought or sold by the ETFs every single day. It kind of 
it, it pushes the market, right? Of course, we have the ETFs actually selling and buying throughout the day, and that pushes the market. But at the end of day, when we actually get the numbers, and maybe BlackRock bought $400 million worth, right? Or maybe there is a net selling of $200 million worth. There's a reaction to that. The market reacts by moving $500 to $1,000 per Bitcoin after those numbers come out because it changes people's perception on whether they're going to continue, right? Is this the end? Is BlackRock done buying? Or is this just the beginning? Are they ramping up? They're starting to advertise. They're going to get all these wealth advisors. They're going to get pensions. They're going to push this out to everyone that will listen to them. Those are the questions that a lot of people have. But again, this halving is just systematically cutting out 450 Bitcoin a day from the market. So if there are 450 less Bitcoin that can be sold every single day, that means all the buying pressure is amplified, right? There's less new Bitcoin. There's less that can be sold by the miners. So I do think this is a big deal. And of course, anything can happen short term. I don't know how the market's going to react, whether we see a bit of a sell off or whether we just shoot up to new highs, right? It's impossible to know in the short term. But this is massive long term. And I'm going to be covering this as we get closer to the halving as we have price action. I'm going to be covering this. Now, if you are bullish and you want to put on a trade short term, maybe you're saying, hey, this is extremely bullish. I'm going to go 5x leverage and just buy some Bitcoin because I think this is going to push up the market. There's going to be half as much selling pressure basically of new supply in a week. This is a time to put on a leverage long. You can do that with no KYC down on Margex or CoinW. And if you want to just buy spot, totally get it. If you want to just sit on your hands, let me know in the comment section. Let me know if you're just waiting for this next having happy with what you've stacked. Thank you so much. Definitely don't let me know your thoughts on those other three cryptocurrencies that I talked about in the video outside of Bitcoin down below in the comment section. Let me know if you're buying any of them. And of course, know that I am owners of a lot of these cryptocurrencies. So do your own due diligence. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. I will see you in the next video. Bye.